before we move on to figuring out how to use this thin airfoil idea to solve for the lift and circulation around an airfoil, we need to do a little bit more thinking about the physics. We need to develop something called the Kutta condition. This is from section 4.5 of your text. Okay, when we talked earlier about the lifting flow over a cylinder, an infinite number of solutions were possible. And these corresponded to different values of gamma the circulation, different value of gamma. In practice, that means different values of how fast the cylinder was rotating. Now, using the tools we've developed so far for potential flow over an airfoil, also get an infinite number of possible values of the circulation. And this is for some given angle of attack. But this can't be right. Because experience tells us that an airfoil in a specified flow will we'll, we'll have a one value of lift. The lift will not change from one moment or one day to the next. So there's only one of the infinite possible number of values of circulation that's physically correct. And we need to figure out how to determine which it is. So we need something more. We need an additional condition. To fix the circulation for some angle of attack. So if I draw a notional airfoil two possible sets of flows at the same angle of attack, we might have something like this, or for the same angle of attack, we might have something like this. So here, we have flow going around a sharp corner. If this is actually a pointed sharp corner, we've got a problem. The velocity must be infinite for that to be the case. And I hope you'll agree with me when I say that we know that isn't going to happen in practice. So with the trailing edge, we get an infinite velocity. Not going to happen in real life. In practice, we get this flow. Where the flow 
smoothly leaves the top and bottom surface at the trailing edge of the airfoil. So the correct value of gamma for circulation is the one which results in the flow smoothly leaving the trailing edge. So correct gamma means flow leaves trailing edge smoothly. This is known as the cutoff condition. And it imposes a new constraint on our solution of the potential flow around an airfoil. But now, this is just a vague statement at the moment. We need to state this quantitatively. So there's two possible kinds of trailing edge for an airfoil. We could have some finite angle. So you can imagine there's a bottom velocity v2 and a top velocity v1. Or you can have a cusped trailing edge where it comes to a fine point. Again, we have V1 and V2. So here, for the finite trailing edge angle, the only solution where there's not a conservation of mass problem, where there's no conflict between V1 and V2, is if V1 equals V2, and they're both zero. So the trailing edge is a stagnation point. For the cusp type of trailing edge, since V1 is parallel to V2, and we can't have a pressure discontinuity at a point, then from Bernoulli, V1 must equal V2, but they're not zero. So, to summarize the cutter condition, we put this all together. For a given airfoil, at a given angle of attack, the value of the circulation is such that the flow leaves trailing edge smoothly. For a finite trailing edge angle, the trailing edge is a stagnation point. So we either have V1 equals V2 equals 0. Or for a cusp trailing edge, V1 equals V2 not equals 0. Now, let's return to the concept of simulating the airfoil with vortex sheets. And it doesn't matter in this case whether we're thinking about the vortex sheets being on the surface or along the camber line. So we've got our vortex sheet strength that's a function of location. So then the cutter condition is that at the trailing edge, as everywhere, the sheet strength is equal to the difference in velocity. Now, if it's a finite trailing edge angle, V1 equals V2 equals 0. And so the strength at the trailing edge would be 0. But for a cusp trailing edge, 
v1 equals v2, those are non-zero, but still it's the difference that comes into play for the sheet strength, and so the difference is still zero. So what we get is that the sheet strength at the trailing edge must be zero. And this is the quantitative useful way of stating the cutter condition. In class, we'll talk a little bit about some r related ideas here. Could we have lift without friction? And what physically causes the cutter condition? Where does the vorticity around an airflow come from when it starts from rest and accelerates to some velocity v infinity? So this is in sections Anderson of Anderson 4.5.1 and also 4.6. We'll discuss these in class, and you might think about them a little bit in some of your homework as well.